Take it, Doris. Oh. Yes, what is it? Roger, darling, I got it. <clears throat> Just ten minutes ago. All we need? To the last cent. Oh, the camp is yours. I've done it. Just as I said I would, I've done it. Well, I helped. Well, of course you did. You were the knight on horseback. Did you go to have a freaking gift? He didn't argue at all. Here he said, take it. Bless his little <laughs> warm heart. Gosh, I don't surpass him all out of breath. You know, if it were the way it's been planned, I'd better start used to myself. Oh, Roger, you're insane. <laughs> Can you imagine, Mary? Our camp. I'm so glad for you. Uh oh. I wonder with this this time. Come on. make you well again. Did you know that 80 years ago I doctored 50 dying Eskimos and they all had pains too? Only big blue ones? Yeah, but you never did. There ain't no such thing. You're supposed to be asleep, you. Yeah, well I ain't. And you never doctored nobody. Were you there? I've been around. You know what I want you to do? Yeah? Go back to sleep. Sleep, sleep. Sleep, sleep. He's tough. Believe it. <laughs> Look, he's all right now. Oh, he's almost asleep. You're wonderful with kids. They are going to have the time of their life at camp. All of them. They'll love it. Say, why don't you come up as a nurse or something? Well, I'll apply tomorrow. Apply now, tonight? And let me consider your application. Well, kiss me first. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me something. Hmm? How did you get the money? Oh, I got it. Well, I thought your uncle was a difficult man. Oh, he is, he is, but, well, ever since you told me you needed money for the kids, I've been working on him, wearing him down. But you refused at first. I know, but... Oh, listen, Roger. Yeah? There's something I'd better tell you. You think I'm a social worker. Mm hmm Well, I'm not. I'm not. If you are not a social worker, why did you tell me you were? Also, I told you that Jay Worthington Proppen was my uncle. Well, he isn't. Who is he, then? That man fathered me. No. Does it matter, Roger? Does it really? But it means I'm taking your money. Well, the money... The money's good, isn't it? And I'm still the same girl. Sit down. <laughs> now kiss me again. Oh, Rosie, I'm so glad. Even if the money belonged to Aladdin, I would take. These kids are going to get a suntan to beat all places and live like little Tarzan for two months a year. Even if I have to go to jail for it. He's asleep now. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
Sleep well, lad. Save your strength for the bear hunting. Yeah, but we don't even see one bear. Go back to sleep, you. Sleep, sleep, sleep. I'm going to phone Mr. Brighton. To who? Mr. Brighton. He is the club supervisor. But it's almost one o'clock. He is dying to hear about it. Isn't it wonderful? Incredible. I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Goodbye. But wait. What will I do now? Are we going to have a conference? Now look, Roger. You started this thing, and it's up to you to finish it. As of now, about four o'clock, I imagine, you are in complete and utter charge of the entire monumental project. Take it and work it. Thank you, sir. You give it all to me. Good. You've been wonderful, Mary. I would not have put you through all this bother. But when old Mrs. Carlton died, you know the woman who was supposed to give me the money. And the money's tied up in court for you. I know. Besides, I love being bothered. You'd better drive me home now. Yes. <laughs> I bet I could drive it home on nervous energy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Here you are. Dad's probably waiting at the window now. Oh, I understand that. Come on. Beautiful night. Wonderful. As Aladdin would probably say, I feel all technicolor inside. <laughs> say, don't forget to come to the house tomorrow night and pick up the check. Your house? Mm-hmm. Dad wants to make a ceremony out of the presentation. Ceremony? What will I wear, hmm? Oh, clothes, just like Dad does. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something. What? Does your father know that the man is after you in quest of marriage? Well, I'm afraid not. Uh -huh. I see. Oh, it'll be all right, I'm sure. But I'm afraid we have a bit of a fight on our hands. I suppose I will have to impress him, hmm? No. Just be natural. <laughs> <laughs> Sum up a little. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning, Mr. Hoffman. Good morning, sir. <coughs> Stock exchange reports. Quick. Wilton's marmalade up two points, sir. And Propman's Gin Exchange Incorporated up ten points on the mass market, sir. May I wish you a very good morning, sir, and suggest that the sun is shining? <laughs> we'll love you. Shall we go dancing afterwards? Oh, I'd love to go. But I simply have to go to this party with Dad. Business, you know. Ah, yes, I see. But we are still taking the kids up to the mountain, aren't we? Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. I haven't been to the mountain for a long time. Good. I have to get back now. Buck stole my matches. Oh, Buck's a devil. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Be in 20 minutes, eh? All right. Don't be so angry, sir. It's too infuriating. Don't do it, please. I told you about it before. Tonight, I'm going to give away a large sum of money for a very worthy cause. And after that, I'm going out to a party. The whole idea is very pleasing. So don't upset me. Far be it from me, sir, to disturb your peace of mind. However, I do feel what I have to say can no longer be put off. Oh, what is it, Sturgis? I have something to tell you, sir. Then go on, man. Tell me, tell me. Put it into words. Don't come at all, sir. I believe, sir, that your daughter is in love. Oh, nonsense. She's far too sensible. I understand, sir, she's in love with a young man whose occupation has something to do with children. What does he do to them? Well, sir, up to present, he's always looked after them. However, I think that now he intends to have some. Oh, go on, go well, on. Well, sir, he has chosen your daughter as the recipient of his affections and also as the future mother of his children. You say he deals in children? Well, sir, he's a social worker. Oh, what a coincidence. I'm going to see one of those tonight. The same one, sir? No. Oh, yes, sir. What a horrible situation. Miss Mary appears to find the situation most intriguing, sir. Oh, please go away, Sturgis, and do not come back 
until you've something more agreeable to tell me. Very good, sir. Now listen, quiet. Men, we are going to camp this summer. Wait! And what a camp! It was found, first of all, by the great Indian, rain in the face. <laughs> One day, when he was hunting, he came down to this wonderful spot of land. He took an arrow and shot it straight into the air. That was how you was, eh? Oh, no! His cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and the arrow came down. Like that. Then he said, This land will be called the land of braves. And our camp will be. Guess it? The camp of the braves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The camp of the braves, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I bet we never get that. <laughs> Listen, man, we'll get our camp. Believe me. Hi. Am I suited for the party, Dad? Oh, I'm glad to see you by yourself. Well, who am I supposed to be with? Well, I thought you always had a suitor in tow. Oh? What brought that up? You had a bad day? I've had a perfectly evil and exhausting day. The more so, because I've found that my house has been made into a refuge for a husband-mad daughter who is scheming to leave me. Well, who's been talking to you? It doesn't matter who's been talking to me, but the essence of the message remains just as disgusting. Oh, you're in a fine mood for a party, aren't you? I'm in an excellent mood. <laughs> and when I get there, at any rate, I can keep you from the men. Oh, now let's get this straight, Dad. I don't know what made you think of it, but listen to me. Now, I'll never marry without your consent. And I'll never marry anybody you don't like. But you'd better put your mind to it. I'm going to marry someday. Someday? <laughs> Why, you're scheming to get married right away at once. Oh. I still love you madly. What, your old father, too? <laughs> Bear me that. You're going to perform tonight, aren't you? What do you mean, perform? Give away money. Oh. Say, you haven't changed your mind, have you? I changed my mind? My good girl, don't you know your poor old father yet? Your poor old unseeing father who's never told anything and who's deceived even in his own home? Oh, for a cigar. Huh. One. That's in the tobacco box. <laughs> Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> uh, what name may I give, please, sir? 
Roger Laroche. Oh, your, uh, your coat, please. Of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Does this photograph belong to you, sir? Yes. Yes. Would you step this way, please, sir? Mr. Roger Laroche. Oh. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss Proffman. This is my father, Mr. Proffman. I'm so glad to meet you, sir. I want to thank you for all that you are doing. Mm. And I shall have a few words to say to you later about what you are doing. It's nothing, sir. It's been the ambition of my life. Uh, Mr. Lacrosse? La Roche. Oh, La Roche. Well, young man, would you kindly uh, give me a little further information about your exact plans? Well, I feel it will be an escape for all of us. Out of the city and stuff in us. Oh, uh, extremely noble. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How long have you been plotting this? For years. For years? Oh, I admire your frankness, but don't imagine for one moment that it softens the blow. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Mary, dear, uh, do you still feel that his intentions are strictly honorable? Oh, yes. I'm sure. Good, good. Then we all three know exactly where we are, don't we? <laughs> Come. Uh, Mary, my dear, I am going to perform. <laughs> Well, I make out for your check and ask you to leave just as soon as is conveniently possible. Well, of course, sir. I, I wouldn't think of keeping you. There's no rush at all. Uh, name? Roger Laroche. <laughs> yes. Oh, Dad, you know his name. Yes, yes, I know it. Well... There you are. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Plotman. Would you mind, Mr. LaRoche, if I, if I came to see your club tomorrow? Not at all. I would be very pleased. Yes, do come. Good evening. Well, mission accomplished. Yes. Mission accomplished. Oh, yes. Oh, no, Sturgis, no, please. Just as you please, sir. I'm so glad to phone you in, Mr. Proffman. You forgot to sign the check. I know I did. Dad! Young man, I wouldn't give you one red cent. I wouldn't endorse a check for you, even if it was, say, my own life. I wouldn't even open a charge account if you were standing here at my elbow. I restrain myself when I say that you are con. Contemptible, useless, deceitful, and a uh, 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 kidnapper. What's the matter, Dad? You're hysterical. That is exactly the word. Young man, you get out of here. And don't you come back again. Unless something's happened to me. And then I suppose you'll come back like a thief in the night and steal my daughter away with her inheritance. My dear, we have a party to attend. You go to the car, Dad. I want to talk to Roger... Mr. LaRush. Well, you stay at a talking distance. Roger, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened to him. I'm afraid that somehow he knows about us. Say, listen. We can get that money yet. But there is no time. Come on, come on. Mary! <laughs> Now, in the safe behind that picture, I've got bonds for more than we need. They're payable on demand. Now, I'm not supposed to get them till three months from now, but you can. I? Steal them. Mary. Well, haven't you ever stolen anything before? <laughs> not anything like that. But listen, Mary. Now, don't be a coward. 
What are you doing? I'm going to give Sturgis the night off. I'll go to jail. I wonder where he is. Yes? Sturgeon, I'd like to give you the night off. Oh, thank you very much, miss, but, but yesterday night was my time off. I'm supposed to be an example to children. You will be. Shh. Sturgis, take another night off. Oh, you're too kind, Miss Mary. You, you shouldn't do this. But I want you to. Your father is waiting. Please, Sturgis, take the night off. Go to a movie or... There's a nice ballet in town. Uh, ballet? Oh, please, Sturgis. Oh, of course, Miss. As you wish, Miss. Thank you, Sturgis. What is he going to do? He'll take it. Dad must be furious. Uh, I'm not a burglar. Then it will be a good experience for you. But do you think we should? Well, when you get the money from Mrs. Carlton's estate, you'll give it back. Remember... We've got to save all those children with green things. Bye. Mary, the combination!
My luck seems to be improving. Two sevens. Here come the boys. Okay, Louis. Good well, evening, up. gentlemen. I was just remarking to Laura that my luck seems to be improving, and then in you came. We got it, Mr. Carson. I'm glad. I'm even delighted. It's right in there. I hardly expected you were bringing me a crate of apples. <laughs> I was telling Laura how badly I felt that you had killed my partner. We were discussing your negligence. Mr. Carson, I wish you wouldn't discuss such things with Laura. He's got a bit of the vulture in him. Very well. Let's see what you have in the box. Uh, Sir Carson, a <laughs> prison. <laughs> Honest, Mr. Carson, it's the first time. <laughs> Is this the man you have killed? No, Mr. Carson. No, there's one another one. We never met this guy. What are you? I'm Sylvester. I know your name. What are you doing in that box? I I deposited me there last night for a little sleep. I sleep in the most unusual places. <laughs> Mr. Carson, you're not going to take this up Get with that Laura. thing out of here. Well, come in. You what will I do with you? Just get him up! <laughs> Mr. Carson, I'll tell you how it happened. Gentlemen, when I sent you out on an errand, a slight errand, you disobeyed my orders. You, you killed my partner. I told him that it wasn't my fault. According to the law, a murder is not a murder unless there's a body. B-O-D-Y. <laughs> Am I right? Right. I, right. Thank you. Then please, may I have a body? I need one almost immediately. 
Any further delay and I shall take matters up in conference with Laura. Mr. Carson, mistake. Get it! I'm tired. You intimate you would rather be dead? <laughs> Let's get the body. Hey, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Yes. I think I know where it is. Do you remember the little car, the English Rover? That's it. If we can find that car... I'm going to help you in this, Mr. Black. I'm going to help you for just this once. Because I pity you. Hello, Wilbur. Carson talking. Yes, I want some information about automobiles. Roger, is that you? Shh, don't make a noise. Is that you, Roger? Do you want to wake everybody? There's nobody home. Mary, I'm shaking like a leaf. Say, how's it going? Oh, terrible. I'm making a mess of the whole thing. I want to get out of here. Not until you get the bond. Shh. What did you say? It's so dark in here. Turn on the light. That would make me a fine thief to work with lights blazing. Say, I phoned to tell you something. Could you not have waited? The combination of the same. Yes, what is it? 31 left. Yeah. 20 right. Yeah. And 14 left. Yeah. Have you got it? I, I think so. Well, you go back to it, dear. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yes, I'll go back to it. Bye for now. 31 left. Goodbye. 20 right. 14 left. Now, you big brains, no mistake this time. Okay. Louis, come around the back. Mac, come with me. All right. Get on with it. Get on with it. for the night out. I had every intention of doing so, miss, but owing to an unfortunate oh, headache, I, I remained within. You haven't seen anything, oh, have you? Oh, no, no, miss, no. I was in my room, oh. very nearly asleep, miss. Uh, I arose just now to, to take the air. Oh. Uh, I suppose that you will be going to sleep now, miss? No, I think I'll sit up for a while. Oh, yes, miss. Roger. Roger. I told him to do it. I beg your pardon. Oh, not to kill anybody, just to steal my bonds. I mean, someone else must have come in at the same time. There was a fight. At... I'm afraid we'll have to telephone for the police, miss. It, it seems that your young man has committed a murder. Oh, Sturgis. It's all my fault. I should never have told him to do it, but... But he wanted the camp so badly. You must be brave, Miss Mary. Roger couldn't possibly have done this, Sturgis. He just couldn't. He seemed a trifle homicidal to me, Miss. Oh, what are we going to do? I'm sure I don't know. He must be just frantic now. If only we could find him. Oh, you mustn't concern yourself so much about him, Miss. After all... But he didn't do it. We've got to get him before the police do. Oh, help me, Sturgis. It... 
It would give me great pleasure to do so, miss. Oh, I love him so. I couldn't stand it if anything happened to him. Does he mean as much as all that to you, miss? Does he really? Oh, I can't say how much. I see. Well, then, miss, perhaps... Perhaps there is something that I can do. Oh, I'd be so grateful. Please, miss, you, you mustn't excite yourself so. Will you help me, Sturgis? For my sake? For your sake? Yes, miss. And now, perhaps if you went upstairs to bed or, or at least to, to rest. Oh, that's a good idea, Sturgis. I'd better lie down. Yes, miss. I will make the necessary arrangements. What is that? Now, Dad, let me explain. What is it? I... I think it belongs to Roger. Roger? Then he is the maniac I prophesied. What are you going to do? I'm going to telephone to the police. Oh! Well, do not expect me to stand around here, do you? And, and watch unknown men die under my piano? Oh, but, Dad, please, we've got to find him. Who? Oh, Roger? Maybe he's at the club. Oh. Let's go over, Dad, please. Two beers. Two beers. You got them. Little teeny weeny English automotive. Instead, we've got a 
That's right, that's right. A social worker. <laughs> One double rum coming up. Hello, Charlie. Listen, I got news. This will kill you. Remember the Carson deal that his dopey torpedo Louis told us about? Yeah, the body. <laughs> well, get this. <laughs> he got the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong guy. You don't say. What do you mean, don't say it? It said they got the wrong body, anyhow. Dear <laughs> me, and, and where did they take it, huh? Well, now, as the grapevine goes, they... Uh... Oh, oh, yes, thank you very much, madam. I, I can't tell you how I appreciate that. Hey, pig, you want to hear the best? Hey, uh, you can... Fill it up Mr. Carson. Oh, don't flout your mediocrity in my face. Step on the gas. And don't shake so much. I'd expect me to kill somebody. Where should we go, sir? To my club. Very good, sir. I'm out of bullets. Can I borrow your gun? You know, I don't carry guns. They bulge. Thank you. 
You two are on the back. Now come with me. Out. Great job, kid. Yeah, did swell, Roger. <laughs> you know, you know, Buck. I've been around. <laughs> Coming, miss, coming. <laughs> 